month, Senators Graham and Schumer put forth a proposal for illegal immigrants to be placed on a path to citizenship, which President Obama declared promising. What mechanisms would you support to address the intertwined issues of illegal aliens and their impact on the USA economy, security, and security of our vote? Um, God bless the people of Arizona for having a set of, uh, you know what? You know, this country has laws, the federal government has them, and why are we having to listen to people telling us that we're racists because we're actually enforcing the laws of the land? Yeah. Number one, the first job of this president and our jobs is to keep Americans safe and secure. And with what's going on in Arizona, I mean, we have to live in their shoes to see the human trafficking, the drugs, the crime, it's absolutely ridiculous, and you don't just jump on the bandwagon because of what happened in Arizona. I mean, my policies have been for securing the borders. It's very difficult to react until you actually take seriously the problem. And this has been going on for a long time. So if, if we don't secure our borders, there's nothing we can do statewide or even around the nation to do the right thing because the flow, the flow keeps on coming. So, you know... It, 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 let's see what the template is, and you understand that this administration now, uh, and, and Mr. Holder, who uh, you know is, is wanting to actually challenge the law and what they're doing in Arizona because it's unconstitutional. First off, they're illegal aliens. This is not constitutional issue here, and it's, it sort of reminds me when I was protesting down at Ground Zero when the same Mr. Holder and this administration decided that they should give U.S. constitutional rights to terrorists and actually try them in New York in front of uh, their peers? What, all the terrorists? I mean, this is the twilight zone, guys. So God bless the guys in Arizona. Hopefully they show us the right path. And uh, let's get this thing right for a change. The delayed response to General McChrystal's request for increased military support in Afghanistan, the Taliban will likely be able to further fund terrorist and insurgency efforts by funneling the poppy harvest into the narcotics trade. Yet farmers have little else to fund their economy. In your opinion, does the United States have an obligation to help diversify the, the Afghani economy, thereby, thereby increasing our own national security? Well, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in whatever it takes to keep us safe. Um, it's a small trade-off to actually do the right thing over there with the intention of thwarting a terrorist attack here in the United States. You know, my son and his guys, uh, some of his closest buddies are there in Afghanistan right now. And um, they are out there destroying the poppy fields and they're doing their job. Um, while our drones are taking out the bad guys wherever possible. Um, I don't think it's our job to do nation building. I think we're running into a lot of problems doing that. However, once being there, once we're committed, I think Iraq was an incredible success story because they've actually voted, and like them or not, the Bush Doctrine actually succeeded over there. If we plant the seed of democracy, it's a buffer against people that want to kill us. Now, in Afghanistan, again, whatever it takes, and I'll, I'll take that one step further, uh, here domestically or wherever we capture terrorists who are committed to killing us, uh, we talk about waterboarding. Um, my son was waterboarded as part of his training. If it saves one American life, it's worth it. I'm willing to trade off for that. Government distribution of grants by politics results in the creation of legislative earmarks enforced by lobbyists and paid for by campaign contributions. This culture of corruptive legislation and budgetary expenditures has had dire implications for our national debt. What actions do you support to remediate this practice? This one short and sweet. Um, earmarks should be completely outlawed. They're a hidden way to get uh, bills and, and pork barrel projects passed without people even knowing it. That's why they're earmarked. And that's why they're thrown onto bills. To me, the entire health insurance bill is a massive earmark that none of us even know what it's really all about because it was passed in the dark of the night. So we have no clue what's even in this bill. And, uh, and while we're at it, let's try a novel approach of actually uh, writing bills in plain English 
that we can actually understand, we the people. That's the way it was supposed to be. The Founding Fathers and the guys later on actually made it that the everyday citizen should be able to understand and easily read what these proposals and bills are. Now these things are monsters. The health care bill is 3,000 plus pages, and it refers to documents that are not even part of the bill. And then attached to that is, is college education and grants and all of this stuff. So again, earmarks should be completely outlawed along with the pork barrel project. This study shows that trust in the federal government is at a historic low of 22%, which increased, interestingly, to 25% after passage of Obamacare. The study concluded that Americans desire smaller government. How do you propose to balance a smaller federal budget with the reality of need needing to support diverse government functions and services? I'm surprised that you found 25% that actually trust what's going on in Washington because uh, until we get a new recruit of guys who had nothing to do with politics into Washington, I think, uh, you know, this place is going to be lost and, and we have to get citizen patriots to actually respond, go to Washington, who are not tarnished by the... Uh, the terrible atmosphere in that swamp. You know, these guys down there think they can just write checks for anything. I mean, you know, think about for a second, Connecticut this year had trouble paying for um, putting salt on the roads this winter. And look at the roads the way they are. I mean, it's like landmines everywhere. But, uh, but we sent a billion dollars to Hamas, you know, terrorist organizations. And we do this regularly. America sends money around the world to people, and they, they justify it. While, while we here as Americans suffer. So obviously we have to cut these ridiculous spending plans, like do we really need to spend $50 million on bee research or rat mating patterns? <laughs> I, I mean, it's incredible what goes on, but it's an accepted modus operandi in Washington. So, you know, again, as a guy who's gonna go down there and not look to be run for re-election, um, guys like me will be beyond corruption. I'm leaving my wallet home. We've got a lot of stuff to do in D.C. for this state. And again, start with actually our moral compass. Actually knowing that what we're doing, we're doing for the right reason. That people are entrusting us with a sacred trust in D.C. And to, to violate that violates everything we are as people. And that's what these guys as politicians do regularly. They're really good at it. Thank you. Rogue nations such as North Korea and Iran are intent on proliferating nuclear armament, thus increasing their global presence. Yet President Obama recently signed an arms reduction treaty. How do you anticipate this to resonate on the global balance of power? And what diplomatic policies could make a positive impact on this one? Um, again, welcome to the Twilight Zone, guys. You, know, you have an administration that, in the heat of battle around the world, we are going to now trust the guys who want to kill us by us disarming and getting rid of our nuclear arsenal or cutting it back or, or doing any kind of negotiations in an open fashion with people who are committed to our destruction. In the twilight zone this works. You know, we are successful as a nation on top of everything else because we are the world's superpower. There are a lot of guys who want to see harm come to the United States, but they don't do it because they fear the strength and the resolve of this nation and its people. When you have a president that goes around the world apologizing who we are as Americans and for our actions around the world, I'm personally offended. I'm offended at you guys who spilled your blood around the world defending freedom. And now you have a president who's apologizing for America's action and giving rogue nations any kind of status over the United States? Not on my watch, I'll tell you that right now. That's not going to happen. Gotta go.